thank you um, for having me. I'm uh, very happy to be here. And um, I was very pleased to um, hear the last two presentations of my colleagues. I, I recognize a lot of things in what they say. Um, I'm a visual artist um, with the, um, uh, the accent on visual, and I use light as a medium. Um, my background is fine arts, so I'm, I'm not a technical person at all, and uh, light just happened to become the right medium for me to work with to express myself. I make uh, lights in um, museums, exhibition spaces, and also a lot in the public space. But I'm going to start with the work I made in a museum. Uh, this was the Light Art Museum in Eindhoven, which no longer exists. Uh, this work was uh, called Spatial Transition. And um, when you entered the space, this is what you saw. You saw the uh, walls uh, flooded with green lights. And there was also a sound, a deep uh, throbbing sound. And um, the transition part um, is hard to depict because uh, could not be captured on camera. It's uh, with the use of a stroboscope, which has a disorienting effect, but you also see uh, an afterlight image, uh, which in this case was uh, red uh, as a contrast to the green light. And at the end, uh, all light was extinguished, and you saw this. Um, now, this is not um, lasers, as many people think when they see this image. Um, what you see here is a painting I made on the walls with a phosphorescent pigments. And um, uh, the stroboscope uh, charged uh, the, um, the phosphorescence in the pigment during the uh, disorienting uh, part of the program. And um, when all light is extinguished, this is all you see. And um, because you have no other uh, parameters, um, you're seeing a different types of, type of space. This was the space before, and this is um, actually, it seems like a much bigger space. Um, I am going to try and give some insight into um, also how I deal with public space. Um, every uh, public space um, can be uh, different types of spaces. In the city, there's um, a lot of activity, a lot of um, uh, distractions as well, a lot of influence from outside uh, space in a museum and in an exhibition space is completely to your control and um, public space there's a lot of factors which you can't control. Um, I um, have done uh, things in many different situations uh, in um, on buildings, in infrastructure, under tunnels, um, bridges, and also in the more quieter spaces, which is also public space as um, like green parts of the city and parks. Um, this is an example of a public art commission that has just uh, been completed in, in Holland uh, in a small place called Nistelrode. Um, I, it's very small. I, I myself uh, had never been there before I had this uh, commission. And um, the incentive uh, of the commission was to um, connect uh, the old building with the new. And um, uh, the new building is obviously on the left side, and it's a reflection of uh, the old existing building, which was already there. Uh, this building is um, a cultural center, and it has a theater, a library, uh, a commu communal space uh, where uh, people can play pool, and a cafeteria in the middle. And um, uh, the goal was to connect the two buildings and to also uh, draw attention to uh, the main entrance, which is actually the arch, uh, which which uh, is kind of uh, contracted a bit um, and not so uh, clearly defined, if you don't know that that's the main entrance. Um, I um, went a step further here. I didn't only analyze um, uh, the, the architecture and the surroundings, but I actually started uh, looking into the total surroundings there. And there's this um, nature reserve called the Masshorst, and I discovered there's a very uh, special feature. Um, there's a vault line running through this. 
Uh, this is not something you think of when you think of the Netherlands. We don't really have uh, many earthquakes. <laughs> Uh, but um, over uh, the course of millions of years, it has shaped the landscape. And uh, it's um, a, a very uh, strange thing happened. Uh, the uh, shifting of the, um, uh, uh, the vault line uh, has caused um, uh, groundwater from down below to be pushed upwards, uh, cause, um, creating upper wetlands and lower dry lands, so it's kind of like uh, the other way around. And um, uh, the water contained, uh, contains a lot of iron, and the iron uh, oxidates when it's uh, uh, brought into contact with uh, air, uh, giving this uh, great rusty color. So this uh, intrigued me a lot, and um, you see this uh, beautiful color formation with the oxidation, and I wanted to um, relate that and bring it back to uh, this uh, special uh, um, site. And actually, everyone who lives in Nistelraude knows about this. So it, it gives a, an extra kind of purpose and meaning. Um, the uh, light line runs um, over the square and into the building and slowly changes color from blue to orange. And it, it kind of bleeds in. It's uh, very, very slow and gradual. And um, then I also had a, 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 an aspect I wanted to introduce to give it a daylight quality. And um, you can already see it on the window over here, but this is during the daylight. And this is a depiction of a tremor, uh, as you have a tremor a wave formation in water, uh, but also a tremor which can be a, um, a depiction of a seismological activity. And inside um, the shadow of this uh, pattern on the windows uh, um, kind of takes up the space of the uh, narrow alley which uh, runs to, to the theater. It's, um, it's a bit awkward presenting uh, sitting down. but <laughs> um, Now, this my next uh, project is an example of um, a temporary project I made in, on location for the um, uh, museum in uh, Dijon, the Musée uh, des Beaux-Arts, Beaux Arts, and for the inauguration of um, the newly renovated museum, they wanted a special light installation, which was only to stand for a week. And uh, on my first site visit, I was um, really um, uh, impressed by the building itself. It's the former castle of uh, the Duke of Burgundy, and so it has a, a lot of um, uh, hist historical and um, architectural uh, value and meaning. But then there's this uh, modern part. As you can see, the, the golden roof is uh, an extension, a modern extension of um, uh, the old, old part of the building. And I saw something really uh, beautiful and catching because when the sunlight uh, hit the roof uh, during the day, you got this golden glow in this uh, ancient uh, part of the building, which is um, uh, uh, the old defense tower and uh, the uh, stairs entering. Um, so I um, wanted to use this gold theme as a starting point uh, to work with. Um, also, the gold is um, uh, very present throughout the whole collection of the museum. You have uh, a centerpiece is the tombs of uh, the Duke of Burgundy and a lot of um, religious art, a lot of gold-plated art, and of course, um, the very recognizable halo, golden halo we see everywhere in these paintings. And uh, this halo, um, I also saw as in the building as a relief, and I wanted to use that and um, as an existing element, but give it extra attention and bring it outwards. So I made these myself with indirect lighting, um, literally becoming halos of light. And this was um, the result during the opening. Um, I also lit up uh, all the arches from within with uh, turquoise, um, kind of leading you into the entrance, the main entrance being on the left here. And the golden roof was lit up um, with a kind of movement of lights 
uh, it's shimmered a bit to give that uh, extra feeling of iridescence. And um, this was the, the gold rich part of the building. And then on the other side, you had a bit of a mystical part um, where I uh, introduced uh, the use of uh, smoke. Uh, th uh, through the defense tower, I had uh, light projected outwards and smoke blowing upwards. And um, th so you could make light visible and it, they would actually look like searchlights. And um, smoke very quickly becomes a playful element because I also used it um, coming up from the ancient well uh, to give this extra feeling of um, mysticism. And uh, this is um, what people started doing. They started playing with it. Um, I also use smoke. Uh, this is not really smoke, actually. This is um, uh, cold steam. It's uh, uh, by ultrasonore sounds. You can also create steam. And I made this uh, installation in a park. And uh, you, it, it just had a very mystifying effect to see this cloud formation uh, uh, on the grass, and it constantly changed. I have a film of it here, just to get an idea of the movement. And it just had something very tranquil and captivating, and it really appealed a lot also to children, and um, they were drawn to it, but people in general were drawn to it, just um, this uh, uh, cloud uh, and smoke. Uh, yeah, I have to continue. <laughs> uh, so I also um, used smoke in um, another installation I made for GLOW in Eindhoven. Um, uh, here I filled a pond with uh, smoke, and I'll just show uh, part of the film very quickly. Um, uh, this uh, had some interaction uh, involved. Uh, I had um, filled the pond with 500 uh, LED uh, lights that resembled uh, fireflies, and they were kind of hiding uh, between the reeds, and um, uh, sensors uh, detected movement of people passing by, uh, agitating these uh, so-called fireflies and causing them to fly around in a swarm. Um, uh, there were a lot of visitors here, so um, the whole uh, use of uh, sensors was uh, depleted a bit here, and I had to adjust it because it was constantly activated. But, um, I um, did the same type of installation for Amsterdam Light Festival last year uh, in a beautiful location behind the um, uh, botanical gardens. and. Um, uh, there they were kind of stuck between the trees and moving, and it was actually more quiet here. Uh, so the same work uh, works differently in different types of situations. And here I made it for a festival in uh, Vlieland, uh, into the Great Wide Open, and this was uh, completely secluded. There was absolutely no external lighting in it. Uh, it was something that you really discovered so once again, a completely different situation. Uh, this I'm going to just run through really quickly. It's a project I did in Albertsland, which is in Copenhagen. Uh, I did three different projects, and they were all. Uh, it was part of the Loose Lut um, um, festival. Uh, ten municipalities were involved around Copenhagen, and it dealt with how can you approach uh, urban space. Uh, in a different way through uh, use of light and sound. And uh, Albertsland is very strange. It has diff two different levels of transit, uh, an upper level and a lower level. The upper level is for the um, car traffic and the lower level for uh, cars and pedestrians, uh, causing all these tunnels and mazes, um, which is uh, at night time a bit daunting and makes people feel unsafe. I um, made three installations trying to connect the two where possible. Uh, this one was um, uh, above and below. Uh, above, um, you can see the cars, and this is an opening in a tunnel. And I had uh, mirrors on the inside and a, a cube, a lighted cube in the middle. 
This was uh, another uh, connection space between a car park and the main shopping area. And this was uh, upside down. Uh, this one is still there because uh, they wanted to keep it. And it's uh, just a very uh, simple, um, uh, simple uh, ge geometric figure. It looks simple, but it was actually quite a lot of work to make it perfect. Um, it's a square, but you don't see it as a square because you always see it from a perspective, except from uh, when you're just in front and you look down. And then you see that it's a square. And this is um, the fourth project I did there, which is um, a light path crossing. It's a path of uh, 200 meters for the pedestrians and uh, the cyclists. And it's uh, very dark and daunting at night. And I just wanted to uh, get, uh, light up the whole path uh, with these light lines so you could see where you're going as you, you'd get more sense of direction. And also um, uh, draw accent to the two different levels. So up here you have uh, the viaduct with the cars, the car traffic up there. And um, I just wanted to focus on where these two uh, cross. Um, light can also work as a beacon. Um, I made this work uh, for uh, Beaufort um, in Belgium, in Middle Kerke. And it still stands there. I, um, this gradually changes color. And I just lit up the top of this water tower like a, a halo. And it changes all the time, but not quickly, very gradually. And um, well, this is the biggest commission I've made uh, to date in Vancouver uh, for a residential building. It's two towers, uh, the highest one being 120 meters. And when I was um, invited to uh, present a design for this, uh, it was still in a form of competition. And I'd never been to Vancouver before, so I had to um, do all my orientation on the internet and from the uh, visualizations I got from the architect. And I uh, did research, and the first thing that struck me was um, this uh, amazing backdrop of mountains uh, Vancouver has, um, which is mesmerizing, really. And it's also surrounded by water. So this presence of nature, or at least the landscape, is there all the time when you're in the city. Wherever you stand, you see the mountains in the background. Uh, of course, coming from the Netherlands, I'm very intrigued by mountains. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so this was something I was obviously going to use. And then I seemed to recognize something in the architecture. Um, you can see the facade was uh, concrete on one side and all glass around. And the glass is not straight, but angular. And I, I somehow started seeing mountain peaks in that. And I wanted to um, respond uh, for, with a very simple graphic by uh, meeting up with these peaks in the light design. So I had LED lights um, um, integrated in the facade of the building horizontally and uh, different presets running, th 30 different presets. And they're inspired by uh, changes in light in nature and color. Uh, the way um, colors change during the seasons um, and during uh, the course of uh, nights and day. So I have um, a little slideshow. If Oh, I don't know where that went. <laughs> yeah, we're okay, we're out of time. So I'm just gonna uh, round it up now. This is um, uh, what I'm working on now for the Amsterdam Light Festival this year. I'm going to um, make something similar to this that I made for Luminous Amersfoorts. Um, here I mounted um, light lines underneath a bridge, which was um, a, like a perfect half round and the reflection in the water completed the pattern to create a light circle. And I'm gonna make this installation on the outer sides of Voorburg Wall, which is um, better known as the red light district. And it's also um, a very old part of Amsterdam and it's got the old church and um, our Lord in the attic, the hidden church. 
And I'm going to mount um, these light lines underneath in yellow, and it gives a kind of reference to the halo again, as well as like a, uh, a crown of lights, uh, and it makes a reference to the, uh, uh, the divine and the sun. So uh, if you have a chance, come and have a look. It's from the 6th of December till the 19th of January. Thank you.